Welcome to the Code Mental channel. If you don't know me, my name is Ermindo. I'm a software developer and my channel is all about software development and Python programming. Here is a 3D model I've created using Python, NumPy and the NumPy STL. This is going to be the first video of a series of videos on how I managed to create this, is, this uh, 3D model out of a photo. All the development was made using a Python notebook in Google Colab. So if you want to follow me along, you should not need to install any third-party libraries at all. You might want to install Blender, but that will only be for you to visualize the 3D model. Rather than just showing you a sequence of steps of how I magically made the 3D model using Python and a bunch of uh, NumPy arrays, I'm going to show you all the behind of scenes work. I think this is going to be very valuable for you, aspiring Python developer. I want you to join me in this learning process and attempt with me this seemingly difficult problem, trying to create a 3D model out of a picture. The idea is to have a bit of fun and at the same time, learn some important topics in Python and NumPy. And at the end, we will have something to show off. You can show it to your family, girlfriend, friends, a prospect employer, and so on. So the way this is going to work, this is the kickoff episode. And then I have a series which is divided into 30 minutes episodes, roughly that, which you can follow along at your own pace. You can skip, fast forward, or even repeat parts which you don't quite understand. If you have any doubts, don't hesitate to leave questions in the comment section and I'll try to answer any question as quickly as possible. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Right, so here I have opened the NumPy STL documentation page, which you can see. So it has a bunch of examples as well that you can use so we can get started very quickly. So I'm going to use Google Colab for this. I'm going to open Google Colab now. Let's create a new notebook. Let's create one. If you don't know Google Colab, it's a very useful. Um, so basically, it's a, a free way of running Python code in Google servers. You can get access to uh, normal. Um, Basically, the other value here is that you can actually use hardware accelerator if you need to. For example, GPU, which would be useful maybe to generate a, a lithopane or something with more, uh, which requires a lot of graphics work, which is kind of what we're going to do anyway. So we might end up using a GPU. But for now, I want to save resources. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, uh, leave this unticked. Maybe later, if we find that uh, generating an STL file is taking too long, we can we can change that easily. So the first thing that we see here is how to install it. So I'm going to install NumPy STL. I'm going to use pip3 just to make sure I'm using Python 3. I'll just give this a title. At some point, I'll be downloading Blender, which is a, a very useful tool for anyone who is into 3D uh, modeling or to in 3D printing. I've used it before myself to design some objects. It also allows you to do Python, which is kind of nice. Maybe one day I'll, I'll cover that in a separate uh, video. But uh, the, the reason I want to have Blender installed is so that I can show you the STL files I'm generating. Let's do this. I'm going to add some text. Um, so I'm going to be a bit slow, right? Because um, I want to create a notebook that you also can use later on. Not writing. Sorry. 
I'm assuming NumPy is already installed, but we'll find out soon. So the first thing it tries to do now is going to connect to a machine. So I'm connected to a server in the Google Cloud. I was going to say Google Cloud Platform, but it's, I'll just mention it as Google Cloud. Okay, because uh, something important about uh, note, Python notebooks is if you're trying to run a terminal command, which you can, just put an exclamation mark before. And then you can do it easily. So it's installing NumPy. In the meantime, if you don't mind me doing some thing in parallel, I'm going to download Blender, which you can do as well. I'll put the link in the description below. Very, very cool software. It's free, yeah? So if you will need to do anything to do with 3D modeling, um, like you can do uh, graphics, uh, 2D, Animation, 3D animation, you can do almost everything, which is amazing. Software is free. I highly recommend. It takes um, a little bit of effort to learn at the beginning, but uh, there's so much material on YouTube to get you started. So I recommend you that. No, no question. There's software you pay for it. Maybe it's more uh, user friendly, but this one is free and actually it's very powerful. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, resources online available to help you learn it, if you want to, right? If I'm installing Blender. Yeah. Might be different for your operating system if you're using Windows. Okay, so I have Blender installed and I'm just going to start it. So I have Blender as you can see. Uh, it's, I'll just give you a peek. This is Blender. We'll get back to it once we need it. Right. So let's do the fun part. So we've installed the NumPy STL file uh, library and I want to go straight to the examples as you probably want as well. So I'm going to add some text and then some code. All right, we'll figure out what to put in the description later on. So I've installed the library, and now the easiest way is always to start with a quick start. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. And paste it here. Quick start. Of course, I'm not going to just copy and paste code, but it's always the easiest way is to, you should always start with some code that's supposed to work. So, okay, so I have this quick start code. Let's see quickly what's supposed to do. So it creates a mesh first. Then it took, sets number of vertices. So each, um, in a 3D model, right? Like if you look at here, this is a vertice, this is a vertice, this is a vertice, this is a vertice. So basically the vertices define the boundaries of the 3D object. So in this case, this cube has four vertices. Here we are defining to 100. And then we use NumPy to create an array of um, 100 vertices. Each vertice, I hope that's the right pronunciation, uh, has uh, three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. So we create a NumPy array, then the mesh is basically using this NumPy array of 100 vertices. Yeah, okay, so 100 vertices. The normals are like the... What, 
what's the best way to understand what the vertice normally is? Let's see. So like almost like you have this. So let's say this is your point, and then the normal is a vector that basically, depending on the surface itself, it will like point to that direction. Let's say if you have a cube, I'll show you the cube here. A normal, if I'm not mistaken, is for example like a vector that would point in the the green, where you see the green line, that would be our normal for if we had a vertex here. That's what I, I remember. Yeah. So let's double check with the Google, which would be much or Wikipedia in this case. So you see, the normal is this red line, right? So I'm going to, so we know what the normals are and these are calculated for us, so we don't have to specify them. But maybe, maybe at some point we could change that if we wanted to. If we really knew about 3D modeling, then I think those normals can affect lighting and things like that. But it's not important for this, yeah? Let's concentrate on a Python, we can. Now we have, so we have the normals. Basically we have the vectors. Here is just doing some like sanity checks, I think. A lot of the things here are not really well explained. So I'm not 100% what is the goal of, of this comparison. And it looks rather strange to be honest. Staking. If we look at, yeah, okay, ignore it. But we will be able to see what the mesh looks like. So we need to. Oh, I wanted to create a new mesh, not. Uh, okay, I don't get the goal of this. Uh... God, let's try another one. It's not really what I want. I want to create a new mesh. I don't want to... Okay, this is the best one, my favorite. Let's try this one. So let's just quickly analyze the code. We have, uh, we are still using STL library. We use math library and NumPy. We are creating a, um, an array of six vertices. But this time, this is quite different. It's using a D type. Uh, which is basically instead of just being like integers, if we look at this data type itself, it should be like maybe coordinates like x, y, and z. Let's check it. Well, I wanted to find the actual definition of D-type so we know what it is. It's always good to know. Okay, so I think I got to it. So, D-type. It's much more complicated than I have imagined. It's like... Uh, It's a list of like normals, vector, so it's like this is a, a list, right? And then this is a, like a tuple, so in the first coordinate you have a normals, I'm 
honest to it, not to understanding 100% of what this migration means. But it looks like a complicated data type. So let's. Yeah, with the. It has normals, vectors, and attributes. And this is all we want to know right now. <laughs> it, it should be fairly simple to understand this, like. So a cube has three faces, right? So we need only three. No, no um, why three faces? So it's not defined in the whole cube. Okay. So to define one face, it's giving us, it's using three vertices. So zero one 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 zero one and zero zero one. Okay, let's um, let's run this, and I'm going to put this in. Uh, I'm going to import this into Blender, and then we can see it as well. Well, actually, it's here. Some of these examples don't seem to work anymore. to work and it doesn't work anymore. You just make this a little bit bigger for your benefit. So you've got to hand it to the NumPy contributors. It's pretty forthright error message. If you're working with some old Python and encounter value error non-string object detected for the array ordering, Please pass in C, F, A, or K instead. I have no idea why. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I'm sure no one else is looking at decade old Pythons, but just in case. Mm. It doesn't look like a decade old. What does this mean? Okay, let's. Um, Go back to this notebook. What does it mean? Flat and minus one. See, so flatten is to basically take the list with the sublists and whatever else is there and put everything, extract all the elements and put them into the list. Check. I need to be careful where I'm getting my information from. It's not fun. I was just doing 3D programming just now, and now I'm looking at the flattened definition. Okay. NumPy flattened. NumPy flattened. What does it do? So if I have an array. Uh, two lists in one list, then it takes everything out and just returns it as a single list. I think the problem wasn't so much, and what does it, what's the argument for? That's the question, right? Flat and minus one. Oh, oh I see. Look at this. Now I know what this CFAK is for. So the code I have uh, copied and pasted, it has the old notation. A minus one should be mapped. <laughs> so now it's starting to make sense. Not. So I need to go back to that. Um, C, C means to flatten in row major. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not sure is about um, but I wanted to find the equivalent of minus one so if we find the equivalent of minus one then we'll be able to get this working 
So let's find out. So I'm just going to get the error message again. I'm going to find that article we saw. Just So minus one is an eight. Let's put an eight. Okay. Hope hope it, it's the last of our problems. This was supposed to be a copy and paste, and I'm here debugging uh, old Python code. That wasn't the plan, right? Oh, this is nice. Look at this. So we've defined three cubes, four cubes. And if you notice, they don't have other faces. In this one, it's, it's easy to see because they are facing us. So this one has one, two faces. This one has one, two, three. This one has two faces that we can see. Maybe there's one on, on the left, I can't. And this one has three faces that we can see, but uh, could be missing one from the, some of them are hidden. But yeah, this one looks like it has only two faces. How does that work? So top of the queue, front face, left face. doing some some stuff that okay I'm not I'm going to ignore it for now just to keep ourselves a little bit sane but uh, I can explain to you this uh, vertices here these are meant to form a face if I'm not mistaken so let's X, Y, and Z. So if we go here into Blender, let's go into vertices mode. You know what? I really don't like this example because it's not the ideal start because you want to start with the very basic okay let's start again because uh, this example some of the examples here if you pick them straight away and if you don't know the library in detail you will get lost right and that's what happened just now I'm trying to figure out trying to remember if these are vertices or not and I want to start with the cube so at least we know where we're standing we know what the cube is we know how many faces it has what can go wrong with that yeah so let's get this example here instead okay we can even open this in in blender instead of just visualizing out with this example it's too uh, too much stuff going on in and uh, it's not ideal to start you want to start with something simple that you understand and then you can go more complicated and here so this code basically creates a cube and everyone knows and then it defines um, this is still a bit more complicated than I wanted, but it's actually not just creating a cube with uh, like the one you see here. It's going to create the faces. It's going to be more a more complicated cube. And in uh, in programming, right? In uh, in computer graphics, you normally when you define uh, when you create a 3D object of some kind, you don't you use triangles as a way to represent them. 
because the the graphics card can deal with triangles very well. That's how it. So what we're going to see, this code is actually doing that. It seems to be dividing each face into small triangles. And that's what we'll see. Let's have a, a go at it. All right, so I'm going to run this. The file should be somewhere in, uh, I can download the STL. Yeah, q.stl, I've downloaded it. And now, I'm just going to import it in Blender. Import STL. And I have Q here. Wait, no, sorry. Let me delete the old cube, otherwise we get confused. Okay. What? So I want to change the vertices mode. So I'm in object mode. Vertex mode. Okay, a bit more. So you see here that we have our cube has two triangles in each face. So this triangle and this triangle. And it's the same for all. Faces. I wish I could. Okay, so I'm just trying to show you how it looks like. Yeah. All right. So this is a, an STL. I've imported it. It created the cube. And now let's just quickly understand the code. So we have eight vertices. And to understand vertices should be fairly simple, right? This is a vertice. And we can see the coordinates here on the right hand side. If I choose another vertice. This is not what I want to do. I need to do. I used to have I don't know, the shortcuts are all changed. Oh okay. So, okay, you see here, the vertex, um, the vertex has coordinates, x minus one, y minus one, and this is a z one. And we can see here, one minus one, one. This is one of the vertices, yeah? I've lost it. This one. Yeah. So we are defining each vertice in a NumPy array. Okay? That's the easiest. I understand that very well. And I'm sure you do too. So it's good that we start with the cube because then there's no... It's the easiest one. Uh, it's the easiest shape for everyone. All right. So these are the eight vertices. We can all agree that a cube has eight vertices. Okay, then this is the more interesting bit. So we are creating faces, right? So let's say I could have just said this is a face. The whole thing is a face. But here in computer graphics, that's not very realistic. You normally have triangles as your face. So in this case, we've gone with the simple, we've just divided the, the square into two and that gives you two triangles, right? So you have here one triangle. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve triangles. So this is where you might you have to be careful. I've, I've used this library before and I almost forgot, okay? So the first thing you think, oh, are these like X, Y, and Z coordinates? They are not. And it's very easy to make that mistake. I mean, I was just doing that again because I haven't used this for a few months. And I was thinking, what the hell is this? And it turns out, if you look at it, these are 
you know, we have tw 12 triangles, right? A triangle has three vertices. So how can they define a triangle, 12 triangles with 12 vertices? It doesn't make any sense, right? And then when you think about this coordinates here, it's only the actual cube itself has only length of one, right? Each side is only one, one centimeter, one meter, whatever you want to. In this case, in Blender, consider it one minute, one meter, yeah, one meter. But actually, these are numbers of, if you go back to the list of vertices, right? Zero is the first coordinate. Three is the third coordinate and one is the second coordinate. Don't, don't forget that Python counts everything from zero. So, so this forms one triangle. So let's just identify it. So first one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay, let's find it. Okay, so I, I think I'm almost there. Minus one, minus one, minus one, right? This is the, the first vertex. So you can see, and then you have plus one, so it shouldn't be this one. Yeah, plus one, minus one, minus one. So this is the second vertex, right? So we have two here. And then the third is one, plus one, plus one, minus one. So maybe this one, no, not this one. No, it should be this one. So plus one, no, no. Plus one, plus one, minus one. Yeah? And then this one is one, minus one, minus one. So we have two vertices. And then the third should be this one. Minus one, no. Wow, okay. Well, something is kind of confused here yeah. because if this is correct, then one, one, minus one. One, minus one, minus one. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, but I would expect the face to be this one, based on zero, oh, no, no, sorry, I made a mistake. Okay. So I've made the mistake of counting three. It's not three, it's this one. So zero, one, two, three. So this is the coordinates. So I have, this one. One, one, minus one. Then I have one, zero, minus one. Wait. One, minus one, minus one. This is second, and then a set. Okay, and this one should be minus one plus one minus one. Okay, so this makes sense. This adds up. So this is a face that is defined here. Yeah? And then you can follow this, right? I'm not going to do the whole cube, right? But uh, if you actually try to uh, decipher this, it, it adds up. And if it doesn't add up, you've made a mistake like I did just now. I counted it from, from one instead of, of zero. Okay, so now we understand the faces. So the more faces you have, the more resolution you have to play with. And uh, okay, in a cube it doesn't really matter because it's flat, but when you have a surface that has more detail and maybe it's not flat, like uh, a ragged surface of some kind, the more triangles you have, the more ability you have to basically uh, make it more detail. Does that make sense? Hope so.